Right, g'day everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to do some more of this load development and we're doing it today on the uh, Mighty 223 Remington. Um, we've got a couple, of, uh, a couple of rifles, a couple of different projectiles uh, and a couple of different powder charges for each projectile. I've done a bit of this over the, over the time before with this sort of thing. I just want to sort of freshen up because I've mucked around the, uh, with the rifles a little bit and um, we did it on the same day as we did the, uh, the, the 270, the 22, 250, etc. the other the other week so um i better get on with this because the uh the rain started to fall on the roof of the shit you may be able to hear that in the background and they're calling for another big lot of rain let's just hope it wasn't as it uh, doesn't turn out as bad as it did here a month ago so uh, hang around we'll do some uh we'll uh go look at the results of some load testing uh, no rage video on this one that's go watch the gun bang bang a little bit boring um we're only interested really in the results and uh as i say Low development, it's one of those tedious things, like hitting the ball against the wall, but it's one of those things you've got to do, and every now and again, you, uh, you learn something. You learn something that you didn't know, or you just refine something, that, uh, or sort out a question, or something like that, but uh, it's always good, and either way, you're out shooting guns, so that's never a bad thing. So, uh, stick around, and uh, let's uh, get amongst it. All right, g'day everybody, we're going to uh, continue with this uh Load, uh, load development series that I've been doing. It sort of, it uh, just seems to be sort of chugging along quite nicely. It seems to be well accepted, and uh, everybody's doing it. And it's something I like. I always like load development, load testing. It's uh, one of these rabbit holes you can really sort of go down with with uh, no end in sight. But I, I like it. You always learn something. So the two rifles. Like, what I'm doing it for today is the Mighty Two Two Three Remington, Australia's bread and butter, Australia's bread and butter cartridge. It's the uh, bread and butter cartridge. It's the cartridge of choice for uh, for pref, uh, professional roof shooters because these uh, they they don't tend to burn out barrels. These things um, they just go and go and go and go and go. Plenty of rifles chambered in them. Plenty of uh, fa all sorts of factory operate uh, factory ammunition options available, and the sky's the limit. You're only limited by your imagination with hand loading. So. There we go, and plenty, and people have been doing these things for years, so there's plenty of information out there on them. So, so the uh, two rifles I've got in front of here is <clears throat> my dad's uh, CMC Australian Mountaineer. Um, that was basically a Howard before they were a Howard. It's got Howard written all over it. Everything's interchangeable with Howard, all that sort of thing. A rail will fit a Howard short action. Rah, rah, rah. These CMC, uh, these Mountaineers, you see them on a second hand gun sites, second hand guns for sale sites. They're gone. They're gone as quick as they get out. Everyone loves them. They're so hard to get. They're hard to get a decent one. And people will buy a rubbish one and refurb the stock and all that sort of thing. They're, they're that good. They're a real honest performer. And it's fitted with a uh, Vortex Viper 3.5 to 10 by 50 scope. And um, this thing is, I would call this the XD, <clears throat> pardon me, the XD Falcon of rifles. It just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. It doesn't shoot a rubbish group. It always does what it does. It I've touched wood, it doesn't break down. Absolutely lovely rifle to have. And as you can see by it, it's used, there's marks and bumps and nicks all over it. And oh, God knows how many rounds it's had through it. And uh, it just keeps going. The, the bore's fine on this thing. It's got little marks around the uh, around the end of the muzzle, but that doesn't seem to affect accuracy one or the other. So we've got that one. And we've got uh, my Howard 1500 and 2 uh, I've done a review on both of these uh, both of these rifles, some somewhere in me in my little videography, whatever you call it. Um, this is just your standard blue sport, 1500, 22 inch barrel, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, the only thing I've done to it since, uh, since I did the review on it, I've put a uh, six to 18 by 50 Bushnell Banner 2 scope on it. I tell you what, I love these scopes. I absolutely love them. They're, they're, they're really good like for, the, for, for a hunting scope. For a hundred shot, the, the 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 value for money you get in that is just quite astounding. So, so there we go. There's our two rifles, and um, right, and uh, we'll we'll get rid of these. We'll do the compose. We'll do all the things. We'll see how we go. So, hang around. Okay, what we loaded our twenty uh, two two threes up for our uh, our range testing. We uh, used ADI two two six H powder for everything. That's what I load two two three up with. A um, little bit around of it, a little bit of it around at the moment. So uh, go and grab some if you can. Um, push them out with Winchester small rifle primers. Again, you can get these at the moment around. So I would suggest grabbing them when you can. Projectiles. 
uh, Sierra Superus, the uh, 1365 Game Kings. They call them the 1365K because you buy them in a box of a thousand. And uh, when that, I think I paid about 175, but that's pretty cheap buying. They are, from what I'm, I can understand, I think they're the cheapest uh, 22 caliber uh, projectile on the market and they work really well. There he is, little uh, soft point boat tailed beastie. And they, uh, they do shoot really well, load up really well and nice and cheap. And uh, also we're gonna use our 55 grain uh, Hornady VMAX. Now these two projectiles, you're probably familiar with them. I've used them uh, in, both the in, in both my 22 250s. They both shoot well out of that. I've loaded them up over the years with the, uh, uh, in the 223s and they work all right. We're just gonna fine tune a couple of loads because we mucked around the guns a little bit. So um, chance to do a bit of load testing. And there's your v, there's your Hornady VMAX, nice little flat base, uh, red tip little beastie. Now all our all our shootings under ninety nine percent of your shootings under two hundred meters. You don't really stretch out that far with a two two three anyway. I, I don't think that's morally right. Um, so our flat base projectiles quite okay. Okay, so that's uh, and our brass is as I say whatever I can find. I've got some PPU, I've got some old Remington brass. It's two two three. It's two to three, like you, you, you shoot, you could go out and shoot a lot of it and you might be flinging a hell of a lot of them out the window so you don't use anything that costs too much. Okay, and as usual, let's put the camera down a bit. There's my two references. I'm using two very familiar, char uh, sorry, four very familiar chargers with uh, with each projectile and, uh, and both rifles. I've used them before, but got them out of cross-reference with these two books, the ADI uh, handbook. And as I say, this is, uh, this is seven years old, I think. Um, most of that's on the net now, and the latest Nick Harvey book, um, what's that, the edition 11 or something? Yeah, 11th edition. Um, again, no dramas there. Uh, I will say the reloading disclaimer, please don't take anything I say as gospel. It's what I do and it works for me. What works for me may not necessarily work for you, so uh, don't tie me to anything you want to do. All right, let's get some cards up and have a look at them. Rightio, set the scene. It's two different rifles, two different projectiles, three different charges of powder for each projectile. So each rifle is gonna shoot six groups. Did take a little bit of time, but uh, yeah, that's the way it goes. You have gotta put a bit of time into this. And I will say there's a bit of operator error in this one as well. It's one of those days, you know, it just, it, I, wasn't doing, I wasn't doing my part properly, but such is life. So we'll start at, uh, we started with the VMAX in the CMC Mountaineer, my dad's gun. Um, he still uses it. And uh, it's a lovely old rifle, this thing. They're a howl before they were a howl, basically. And uh, uh, CMC Australian Mountaineer, and they are such a good old rifle. You see them for sale on the second-hand gun sites, and they're, they're gone before you know it. Everyone loves them. So anyway, let's move along. We started with the 55-grain VMAX. We started with a charge of 25 and a half grains. Boom, 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 1.31 inches. No, no good. We come over to 26 grains. 1.48, but those two are 0.85, so they're a little bit close together. This one over here, nothing was close together at all. And uh, 26.5 grains, let's just move this camera just a little bit, there it is. 1.57, okay, but look at these two, 0.35, so there's potential there, big chance that's me, big chance, who knows, but you could work with that. Okay. Right. Now we went to the Superus out of the uh, the Mountaineer. One point four four, but they're way to hell down here. Way to hell down here. But these this one here, these two, are point one six. So yeah, maybe, 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 maybe. Coming down to this one. Now, for whatever reason, one of these would not fit in the rifle. So this is only a two-shotter, because I touched that little bag to three out. One just would not go in the would not go in the rifle at all. So don't know what that's about. So one of those things. What a little chink in the brass I missed anyway. So we put two right next to each other at uh, 0.26. So take what you can out of that, live with that. Here we go, and this is what we shoot with it. With these super roos out of that mountaineer, we've shot a 0.4 of an inch group. So you'd, you'd cash in at that, 0.4 of an inch, I'd cash in at that. Yeah, that's the load we've been uh, using out of it, and I'm, I'm happy to stay with that one. 
So there we go. That's our uh, that's our CMC rifle done. Now here's my Howa uh, Howa Sporter in the two D three. Now something that happened with this one too. There was only uh, there's only two shots here for some reason. I think I had another little brass malfunction there, but that was uh, twenty five and a half grains of two two oh six. There, <coughs> pardon me, one point four inches apart. Don't worry about that. Okay. 26 grains, which is what I've shot out of this. Okay, 0 0.99, so we've got in under, uh, we've got in under MOA. Just scraped in under the wire there under MOA. They're 0 0.38, so that's, that's not too bad. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm happy to stay with that. And 26.5, just up the ante a little bit with the powder. One and a quarter inches, but two in there. That's half a chance that's me. But that goes because they were the first two. Boom, boom, boom. It's half a chance that's me. So, yeah, we'll, we'll put that down as a possibility too. So, okay, we've gone to the Superoos with this one. Now, what have we shot here? We've shot a 0.74 in each group. It's way to buggery down there though. But that's look, that's either here or these. Wind that up. That's why they give you. That's why they give you elevation knobs. The windage knobs on scopes. You wind that up. That's not an issue. So 0.74 at 25 and a half grains. Got a bad kickoff. 26. Uh, what did he go at? One and a quarter again. So yeah, not uh, not real flash there. Those two are point nine. Yeah, take word, read what you read what you like into that. <coughs> Here we go. This is interesting. We've got uh, 26 and a half grains. The Sierra Super behind the Sierra Superos, which is what we shoot in the other two D three. Now we put a grain of powder. We've upped the grain of powder. That's it. Now, the, these are up here, they've shot, what's this shot? One, 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 minus one and a quarter inch. Okay, but these two are point two. they're right on top of each other, so that may be me. All right, but here's something that's interesting, look at this. You put a grain of powder, you put a grain of powder extra in, you go from the absolute bottom of the square, same projectile, 25 and a half grains there, a, a half decent group at the absolute bottom of the square, Put an extra grain of powder in, you go for a half decent a half decent group at the absolute top of the square. So they, they, and that and it's always been a little belief of mine with some of these projectiles, and it particularly holds true with these uh, Superus. It seems to be the harder you chuck these things, the better they go. So read into that what you will. But I'm uh, I'm happy to keep the loads uh, for the different rifles as they are. And uh, I did one more little test, which I found a bit interesting. I shot both the rifles with each other's ammunition through it. So, see how that goes. Okay, I'm lift that up just a little bit. Okay. Okay, this is the uh, CMC Mountaineer 2D3. It shot the 55 grain Superoos. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <coughs> me. 0.422 in the middle, they say cash in at that. And the uh, 55 grain VMAX, how did it shoot that? Oh, way the hell down there. But in saying that, still still shot uh, under MOA, 9.94, those two are 0.2. So yeah, that's a, that could be a winner. That's no dramas. So we'll uh, get rid of that one. Lucky last, the Howler. We shot the uh, the 26 grain pushing the 55 grain VMAX 0.54 at pin at close enough to pin high. So I'd be happy that I'd if I was to adjust that I'd might make it. Oh, that's going to be about the mini group there. So you maybe two up and two right, three up, two right, something like that. And that that would put you probably on between the point and that first line there, which is fine. That's, that's where you can live with that. And the 26.5 grains of the, uh, of the uh, 2 to 06 pushing the uh, Superoos basically mirrored what it did on the, uh, on the uh, test groups. High left, way to, bug, way to bugger out there. Spread the group out a bit more. So that's the way it goes. So I'm happy to leave the, uh, the loads for the different rifles that I've got as I've got them. And... Uh, We'll, uh, we'll work on them from there. But it, it's got to be said that I've got to do my bit behind the, behind the butt as, uh, 
as all, the, all shooters have to do. It doesn't matter what you got. If you don't do your bit, the thing just won't work. So uh, there we go. We'll uh, wrap this up, put it to bed. Right, load development, load testing for the 223. Done and dusted, let's put this one to bed. Um, the Howe rifle, Howe top rifles, good as gold, never an issue there. Uh, didn't really find out too much new, uh, too much new uh, in this little session, but everything's pretty much been done with 223. I mean, it's been done to death, as I said, bread and butter cartridge. Um, one thing I did, uh, I did find out that the Howes don't really care about uh, that much about bullet length, as long as they'll sit in the gun, they'll shoot it, and that's fine. Now, um, it also reaffirms that our loads and all that are all good, which is not a bad thing to do from time to time, particularly if you muck around with the rifles a bit. That way, when you go out and you, you, you go your little trips away out to, you know, you're out, of, uh, out of the middle of nowhere, you'd be confident in your equipment and all that, that it's all up to, all up to, uh, all up to scratch and performing as per, as per requirement. So it's all up to you then. Don't blame anything else, blame yourself. So there we go. This one's done. I'll, uh, I'll put it to bed. I'll sign this one off. If you liked the video, and I hope you did, please give it a uh, please give it a thumbs up. That'd be really nice. Uh, subscribe to my channel. That'd be really good. And uh, give us a big share around. That'd be really nice too. So, uh, as I always say, you can tell your wife, you can tell your girlfriend, you can tell them both. Don't change the world. Just go two clicks up. Ta-da.